All right, great. I'm Tom Hale, uh, Chief Product Officer of uh, Linen Labs. Here to talk about Second Life, because uh, not only has Second Life survived the hype, we've uh, actually thrived. So, in uh, 2007, the hype was hot. Uh, I wasn't there, but the novelty of virtual people making real money was uh, very good press. Uh, and suddenly, Second Life was sort of loved, it was hated, it was fashionable, it was unfashionable. Was it a fad? Or was it really just sort of the first step towards Neuromancer, Skynet, Tron, The Matrix, all melded together with a little bit of Milton Friedman thrown in? By 2008, the worm had turned. Second Life, what? That's so 2007. Facebook, Twitter, iPhone, and the press left. But the users stayed. They stayed engaged. They kept spending real dollars for virtual currency for virtual goods. And like the old Fabergé commercial, they told two friends, and then they told two friends, and then they told two friends, and Second Life usage and revenues kept on growing. Why? Because our users are hardcore. Now get your mind out of the gutters. I know what you're thinking. It is not that kind of hardcore. In fact, when we looked at the data, the amount of sex in Second Life is about 15% based on search terms or items in the catalog or parcels that are identified as um, uh, adult. By hardcore, I mean hardcore engaged. In fact, our, our users are so hardcore, we don't call them users, we call them residents. And they are the reason why Second Life survived the hype. So let's talk a little bit about those residents. The killer app for the majority of people in Second Life is, wait for it, each other. Socializing in real time, in an interactive 3D environment, that's what drives the engagement. Meeting people, joining communities, attending concerts, talking to each other. In fact, the average Second Life user spends 40 hours per month in Second Life. That's 100 minutes average session time, and 25 of those 40 hours are spent talking. Second Life does a billion voice minutes per month. Now that means Second Life is a social platform. Users come to communicate, to express themselves, and they're highly, highly engaged. Now, there's another kind of user, the geek. At the peak of our hype, Second Life was featured on NBC's The Office with uh, uh, Dwight Schrute as sort of the prototypical geek. He wanted to make an application to convert uh, Linden bucks, Schrute bucks into Linden dollars. And uh, the alpha geek, the, the early adopters, helped Linden to make Second Life. They extended it. They built applications out of it. They built games on top of it. They, they built scripts. They sold the scripts. And while Second Life has its Dwights, it also has its Pams and its Jims. Turns out it has a lot of Pams. About 50% of the usage in Second Life is from women. So what's the lesson there? You need a broad appeal. And how did we get a broad appeal? Well, it turns out we outsourced that. It was our content creators and our developers who built the broad appeal, because there's something in Second Life for everyone, whether it's one of the 250,000 new items created each day, or something from the existing corpus, 270 terabytes of 3D objects, of textures, of scripts. The breadth and scale of this corpus means that if you want something, whether it's a car, or a blimp, or a pair of shoes, or a dress, or a 747, so you can pretend you're a Google founder. It's probably in Second Life, and it costs a whole lot less. And that is a very sticky application. So what's the lesson here? Well, the network effect of user-generated content and attracting content creators created value that was broad and deep. But that's not all. Some of these people actually went and built businesses. It wasn't just about self-expression, it was about building a business. These are the, the merchants, the people who created nightclubs, who sold houses, the builders of brands, the, the merchandisers of the experiences that it attracted and engaged users. About 10% of our user base makes enough money in Second Life to subsidize, subsidize their Second Life activities. And a, a small number of them actually make a full-time living in Second Life. And if you take the whole economy, it's about half a billion dollars. It'll be half a billion dollars this year of user-to-user -user transactions on our platform. And that's all done in the Linden dollar, which has been very stable compared to the US dollar, which has been very unstable. So the interesting thing here is that our most successful merchants are making hundreds of thousands of dollars from Second Life. But they're not the only businesses that are in Second Life. Most, most people think about Second Life, they started to think about it as a marketing platform, but that, that was actually a total mistake. 
it's training, it's simulation, it's company events, it's collaboration. These are the use cases that are bringing enterprises to, to look at Second Life and at, at virtual worlds in general. And this is totally enabled by that user-generated content because if you want to have a great event with all these things, it's already been created and you can just bring it together. Today there's over 250 businesses in Second Life. They're generating millions in revenue for Linden Lab and driving us to provide them solutions that they need like a behind the firewall solution. There are other communities, the educators. They're incredibly passionate, they're incredibly committed. There's 600 universities that are, that are using uh, Second Life as a teaching platform. If you can't go to Rome, if you can't go to Chichen Itza in real life, you can go there in Second Life and you can learn a lot about it. There are also the charities. Uh, our mission is actually to try and do, uh, to improve the human condition, and happily that improves doing good by doing well. Some of the most successful charities are in Second Life raising money. They're using our microtransaction currency and our frictionless economy to gather money. 250000 was raised for the Relay for Life by the American Cancer Society this year, all from very, very small contributions. So what can you take away from how Second Life survived the hype? Well, the mistakes that we made and the lessons that we learned could fill many, many books. But here's a few high points for you. One, think big. Two, listen to your users. Three, Create what Tim O'Reilly would call an architecture of participation. Don't get caught in the hype, up or down. Instead, know your users, serve their needs, focus on their needs. And when success comes, you will make mistakes. Today's compromise will be tomorrow's architectural liability. And then most importantly, find your business. Linden, luckily, found a business and found a way to make money early. So when the hype came, it created a big enough business that we could fund the experimentation and the innovation that all young companies need to survive and thrive. So it was our users that got us here, and we're proud to say that in September we hit a pretty amazing milestone. One billion total user hours from the dawn of Second Life, and that's a pretty deep engagement number considering the number of users that we have is relatively small. One billion dollars in total user, user transactions. That means our economy that's big is actually growing really fast, 94% in the last quarter. And one billion voice minutes. By way of comparison, in Q2 of this year, Skype did eight billion voice minutes. We have a population that is probably less than 1% of that of Skype. And all of this was done on a platform that embraces innovation, and iteration and creativity that is spurred on by openness. So where does it go? Well, I don't have time for that, and we probably couldn't even say for sure. Our communities, our developers, our content creators, our entrepreneurs, they will lead us there. But we do know that virtual worlds and Second Life are here to stay, and that we're laying the foundation for the future and the growth for the next wave of innovation when it hits. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot something. There, there Go was nuts. I, can, can we bring the, the slide back? Lauren, can we put that back up? Okay. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, we just thought it might be kind of a nice idea just to, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to put too hard. Just, just a little letter for our friends over at Twitter. Just since we've been through it and they haven't, just share it. You guys can read it. It's up on the web if you want. But, but thanks, uh, thanks for listening. And, and good luck with the hype, all of you. <laughs> thanks, man.